Millions of people never open the Bible, but Christians are an open book to them. Do they get the message from us of a saving, keeping Jesus? Christ's ambassadors need credentials. As laborers in the harvest fields of the Lord, there is one thing in particular we must be vigilant about. The guard at the door of the heart is called humility. If humility is off duty, the enemy can enter. In the days of ancient Israel, if a man was killed even accidentally, his relatives had to avenge his death by slaying a man from the killer's family. The blood feud was a merciless, wicked practice which could go on between families for generations. In the book of Judges, he commanded cities of refuge to be appointed for those who were fugitives. A man being pursued by an avenger could flee to a city of refuge. Once he was inside the gates, he was protected. One of these cities was the city of Hebron. During a time described in the second book of Samuel chapter 3, there was civil war in Israel. Abner, the king's cousin, had killed a man called Asahel. Asahel's brother, Joab, vowed vengeance. As Abner arrived at the well of Sira, Joab sent a message to Abner. <laughs> David. <laughs> Ah. 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 Ah.
ていうキャストンかファール。His first job is to give you a false sense of strength, to let you feel you can never fall. The devil is a full-time professional opponent with thousands of years of experience. You cannot match him, except by the help of God. You need the spirit of discernment. The devil failed with Christ, so he attacked the disciples. And still does so. It is easy to judge others. It makes us feel superior to them. Some of the best men have gone down in battle. Don't look down on those who fall, but say to yourself, There, but for the grace of God, go I. The devil will divert your attention while he moves in. We may lead the battle at the church front, but leave our flank unguarded, too busy to watch and pray. The history of the church is full of examples. Leading bishops were so zealous for true doctrine that malice came into their hearts、mm. and the angel of compassion flew away. Perhaps we are preoccupied with. Territorial spirits up in the clouds, ordering them away from the rooftops, and we don't have time to guard our own heart's door. In the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face. With two he covered his feet. And with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory." With two wings they covered their faces. Humility. This is a striking picture. Mighty seraphim hiding their own faces in modesty and crying out about the holiness of God. They were holy themselves, but they said nothing about their own holiness. They cried, "Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts." They were also creatures of bright splendor and glory. But they said nothing about that either. They cried, "The whole earth is full of His glory." They covered the great beauty and glory of their own faces, so that the face of God should be seen. They did not upstage the Lord. They spoke only of Him and drew attention to Him, not to themselves. That. Is the divine example for all God's servants, lowliness of mind. Jesus said of himself that he was lowly 
in heart. We read, he humbled himself. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place. Jesus rose to the highest dignity as the Son of God by accepting humiliation of the cross. His status was in obedience. Evil began with pride. Conceit, arrogance and pride are abominable in the sight of God. If God's servants become egotists showing off in their service, it disgusts God. Preaching the gospel is not a branch of show business. Three Bible books say God resists the proud. Lowliness has a high place with God. That doesn't mean we must try to be lower than we are. It is to realize that we have every reason to be humble in the sight of God. We become to him as little children. He never asks of us anything except obedience. That is how Jesus was humble. He took upon himself the form of a servant. There is a kind of humility which is wrong. Colossians 2 verse 18 and 23 refer to those who surrendered themselves in false humility to worship angels. The lowliness of a Christian is always noble and never shameful and abject. We don't crouch before God and call ourselves worms. God doesn't want his children to be worms. The seraphim were self-effacing. They never spoke of themselves. It is natural to want to be appreciated, but seeking for admiration is another thing especially doing God's work. We can only do what God gives us the power to do. God alone is worthy of praise. We don't want to put on a cloak of humility. God doesn't want an affected pose. The Pharisees walked with a bowed head as a sign of humility. They prayed, gave alms and fasted. But it was to be seen of man. They were humble to show off. Why do we pray? Is it to be called a great man or woman of prayer? Jesus said we should pray in secret so nobody would know. Moses knew not that his face shone. He was the meekest man on earth. The humble don't need to try to be humble. Jesus washed the disciples' feet, but he was not putting on an act. Mm -hmm. It was natural to him. James 4 verse 6 says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The Christians to whom James wrote wanted to be great. They fluttered wealthy and important visitors. Poorer people were told to stand aside. Jesus never tried to impress the wealthy or great. He called even the king a fox and said, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. James said, God gives grace to the humble. Greatness is measured by humility, not by human glory. We all have a chance of true greatness by the grace of humility. You are our epistle, written in our heart, known and read by all men.